Okay, here's the problem I gave you to, end, to work on at the end of the last video. As I can see, it's a quadratic in tangent. So the first thing I want to do is get everything on one side, zero on the other. That's going to be true whether I'm going to factor or use the quadratic formula. Both of them require that I have things set equal to zero. Now, I prefer to have the squared term be positive, so I'm going to choose to just add 2 tan squared x to both sides. So I'm going to get 0 equals 2 tan squared x plus 4 tan x minus 5. Now, I'm highly suspicious that this does not factor. That's largely because this is in the section on using the quadratic formula. But I'm going to check anyway, although I will point out that even if it did factor, the quadratic formula is always a viable option. I find that it's usually easier if it does factor to just factor. Um, so that's usually my go-to. But if, it, if you're not sure if it factors and it's taking you a long time to factor, you can always fall back on the quadratic formula. It's always a legitimate option if you have a quadratic. Okay. So if this was going to factor, I'd have to have 2 tan x and tan x. And the only numbers that multiply to give me 5 would be a 5 and a 1. So I can see they'd have to be opposite sides. Let's see, if I put a 1 here and a 5 here, I'd get 10 tangents and 1 tangent. I'll be subtracting. They're not going to subtract to give me 4. So I could try putting the 5 here and the 1 here. Then I'd have 2 tangents and 5 tangents. That's closer, but they're not going to subtract to give me 4. Okay. So this doesn't factor, so I've got to use the quadratic formula. Now, since this was a quadratic in tangent, I'll be using it to solve for tangent. Now my a is 2, my b is 4, my c is negative 5. Notice I'm getting them from this version of the equation where I set things equal to 0, not the original where I have things on both sides. Okay, so tangent of x is going to be, I like to just write out the formula and then plug into it so that I'm not trying to multitask and remember the formula and plug in at the same time. So it's going to be the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that's going to be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times 2 times negative 5 all over 2a will be 4. So that's going to be negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16. That's going to become a plus 4 times 2 is 8 times 5 is 40, all over 4. So that's negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 56 over 4. And I can definitely simplify that root. So I can see that 4 is going to have to go into 56 because it went into both 16 and 40. So it's going to go in 14 times. Looks like that's as much as I'm going to be able to pull out because 4 would be two twos. 14 would be 2 times 7. If I can pull out, a, I've got a pair of 2's, I can pull out a 2, it's going to be 2 root 14. So we've got negative 4 plus or minus 2 root 14 all over 4. Okay. I think I'm going to um, just distribute the division. I've got to reduce this. So I could either factor out a 2, or if I just distribute the division, Now I can cancel each fraction. Can't cancel across the addition and subtraction when I'm writing it as one fraction. But now I can say this is negative 1 plus or minus root 14 over 2. <laughs> All right. So I've got two solutions here. Now, as I mentioned at the end of the last video, as long as I get something real, so as long as what I have under the root is not negative, that would just be no solution then I know that's in the range of tangent. With sine and cosine, I need to have things between 1 and negative 1. With secant and cosecant, I need to have 1 and bigger or negative 1 and smaller. But with tangent, both of these are in the range. I'm just going to notice that negative 1 plus root 14 over 2 is going to be positive. I can see that root 14 is going to be bigger than 2, because if I square it, I'm going to get 14. Whereas if I square 2, I'm only going to get 4. 
So this is going to be bigger than 1, so when I add it to negative 1, I'll get something positive. But negative 1 minus root 14 over 2, that's going to be something negative. <laughs> so if I go about solving, let's solve the first one. So I'm looking for where tangent of x is negative 1 plus root 14 over 2, which we just said was a positive number. So tangent is going to be positive in quadrant 1. Everything's positive in quadrant 1. And it's also positive in quadrant 3. So I'm going to have one solution here and one solution here. Now this is just an acute angle, so that's very nice. This is just going to be x equals arctan of negative 1 plus root 14 over 2. That's going to become my reference angle as well. So here, this was x is pi plus that reference angle. That's just going to be pi plus arctan of negative 1 plus root 14 over 2. So it's a messy number, but all I'm doing with it is writing it down. Okay. I had to figure out whether it was positive or negative. Once I do that, I'm just writing it down. So I've got two solutions here. I've got arctan of negative 1 plus root 14 over 2, and I've got pi plus arctan of negative 1 plus root 14 over 2. Those are the solutions. I'm going to actually erase this all solutions because it's going to take me a little while to write all of the solutions just between 0 and 2 pi. So those are the solutions to this equation. My other option was that tangent of x was this other value, negative 1 minus all of this. So if I look at tangent of x equals negative 1 minus root 14 over 2, we said that was going to be a negative quantity. And tangent will be negative if I'm in quadrants 2 with a reference angle of alpha, or 4 with a reference angle of alpha. Now what I know about tangent of alpha is that it's going to be the absolute value of this. But since this was a negative number, the absolute value of it is just the opposite of it. But that's just going to make it positive 1 plus root 14 over 2. So alpha is the acute angle whose tangent is this lovely number, 1 plus root 14 over 2. So alpha is arctan of 1 plus root 14 all over 2. <laughs> so here, this angle, x was pi minus alpha. So that's going to be pi minus arctan of 1 plus root 14 over 2. This angle, x was 2 pi minus alpha. So that's going to be 2 pi minus arctan of 1 plus root 14 all over 2. Okay, so I've got pi minus arctan of 1 plus root 14 over 2, and I've got 2 pi minus arctan of 1 plus root 14 over 2. So these are my four solutions between 0 and 2 pi. Now, if I want to write all solutions, I can certainly do that. I'm going to definitely take advantage, because I'm tired of copying this. I'm going to take advantage that with tangent, these two solutions and these two solutions were just pi apart. So I can write this one, arctan of negative 1 plus root 14 over 2. If I add a multiple of pi to that, notice if n is 1, I'm going to get this solution. So that covers both of those. Okay. Same thing here. If I take pi minus arctan of 1 plus root 14 over 2 plus n times pi, and here I could, if I wanted to, not bother to write that and let that be absorbed into these pi's. If n is 1, I'm basically going to get this solution. I do still need to write that n is an integer but that's going to give me all of my solutions. Okay.